ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we seek His help and we seek His forgiveness. Whoever Allah guides, there is none that can misguide. Whoever He allows to go astray, there is none that can guide. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of our worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, without any partner or associate. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the slave of Allah and His messenger and His best worshipper. And the, seal of all, and the seal of all the prophets alayhim salam jami'ah. And indeed the best of speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And the best of guidance and example is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of matters are the newly innovated ones into Islam. The religious innovations for every newly religious matter, it is a bid'ah, it is rejected. And every bid'ah leads to the hellfire. We ask Allah to protect us from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, addressing the believers. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah, wa ma yaf'al thalika fa'ulaika humul khasirun. Allah says in this beautiful ayah, an ayah which should really shake our hearts and bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is telling us, let not your wealth or your children diverge you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, to keep you busy away from the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal. And from the remembrance of Allah is the salawat, it is the prayers, the maktubat, those which are obligatory upon us to perform as it was ordained by Allah azza wa jal. Allah also says in Surah Al-Ma'oon, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Waylul lil musallin, meaning woe to them or a destruction or a punishment for them, those who pray. Who are those who pray? Those who pray and they are sahun. They are negligent in their prayers. The scholars, they, they explain this. They say either they don't pray at all or when it comes time, the time, the time comes to pray and they delay it. And they do not pray it at its, appoint, at its, at its appointed time. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has prescribed all the prayers to be fixed at certain times throughout the day. And this is a must for us to maintain that, to observe the prayers in their times. You cannot delay the prayers outside of these time frames. So to say that because of my work, I will just pray my prayers when I go home. I'll delay them later. I'll pray them later. Or because I have something to do right now, or because I want to finish this project, and so on and so forth, or because I want to sleep in, and when I wake up, I'll just make it up later. This is not acceptable, my dear brothers in Islam. I'd like to remind you, and to remind myself first and foremost, by highlighting the importance of the salah, a deed which we are obligated to perform on a daily basis. And sometimes we forget about its importance. First of all, the person who leaves the salah, muta'amidan, he leaves it on purpose. This person, he doesn't pray Fajr, he doesn't pray Dhuhr, doesn't pray Asr, doesn't pray Maghrib, doesn't pray Isha. He doesn't perform all of these mandatory prayers. We have to understand and remind ourselves about what the Prophet والسلام, he says what will take place on the Day of Judgment. He says 
إن أول ما يحاسب به العبد يوم القيامة من عمله صلاته. He says what means عليه الصلاة والسلام that the first thing about which Allah is going to take us into account for is the salah. Out of all actions that we perform, the first thing Allah is going to take us into account for is the prayer. This is how important it is, my dear brothers in Islam, that the first thing, in fact, which the Prophet والسلام, was instructed with when he went on that night journey and on Miraj, the first thing, the most important thing that he came back with was not those wonders that he saw, but the obligation of the prayer. And I was the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. And this is the most important of all. So he says, alayhi salatu wasalam, after mentioning the fact that this is the first thing we are going to be held accountable for, he says, فَإِن صَلُحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَحَ He says, if these prayers, which were ordained for us to perform, if they are correct, if they are in order, then that person, he would have prospered. He would have succeeded. Whereas, وَإِن فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسَرْ and if that's not the case, where the person, he did not do that, he did not maintain his salawat, his prayers, and they were not in order, and they were not correct, then this person, he would have failed, and he would have lost. So this is the first thing, which Allah Azza wa Jal is going to hold us into account for on the Day of Judgment, simply praying these five daily prayers. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Maryam, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ ضَعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا شهوات he says subhanahu wa ta'ala what means that there came a people who gave up their prayers and they followed their lust, they followed their desires, so they will be thrown in the hellfire. The ulama, they explain this, they say those people who Allah is talking about, who is talking about and about whom this ayah was revealed for is those people who delayed their prayers. They prayed, but they delayed them. They did not offer them at the right time. So what is going to be the condition of those who don't pray at all? Allah mentions the conversations which will take place between the people of Jannah and the people of the Hellfire. And Allah says that those people of Jannah, they will ask the people of the Hellfire, مَا سَلَقَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What made you enter the, the Hellfire? قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِلَ الْمُصَّلِينَ They will say, we were not of those who used to pray. Either they neglected or they did not offer the prayers at the right time and they made all the other type of weak excuses. So you have to ask yourself, why do I have to do this? Why should I leave my job if I'm not able to pray at my workplace? Why should I leave that workplace and look for another one? Well, think about what the Prophet ﷺ, he says. When he says that this will be the first thing about which you will be asked about, this is sufficient for an answer. That's it. It's an open book test. The Prophet ﷺ told us about its importance by simply saying it's the first thing that Allah is going to ask you about. And that should be enough for us to understand. We don't need to go into the other virtues of salah and how many rewards you get for praying. You know, for walking towards the prayer, for making wudu before prayer. All of that, there's fada'il, there's virtues, there's merits behind that. And you'll, there's lots of good deeds. We show that it will be one of the heaviest deeds on your scale on the Day of Judgment. But he said it's the first thing that you will be asked about. So my dear brothers in Islam, likewise, the Prophet ﷺ, he reminded us when he says, That the agreement, the covenant between us and them, meaning the non-Muslims, it is the salah. This is what makes us different. So whoever abandons it, then he has committed an act of disbelief. So this is our connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the most important of all connections my dear brothers in Islam Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu he asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam ayu la'amali afdal he says which deeds are the best ya Rasulullah or in another narration which deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon which the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he says as salah the prayer not just that ala waqtiha at its appointed time May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the tawfiq to perform our prayers properly and on their time. Allahumma ameen. Aqullu ma tasma'un. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillah, walhamdulillah. 
wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. As we were discussing and talking about the importance of the prayer and its obligation, our Prophet Ali salatu wa salam, he also says in hadith regarding those who preserve and they maintain their prayers. He says, man hafadha alayha kanat lahu nuran wa burhanan wa najatan yawm al qiyam. That whoever safeguards these prayers, he takes care of them, he looks after them, then they will be a source of light for him, a proof, al hujjah and the means of salvation on the day of resurrection. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُحَافِظْ عَلَيْهَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ نُورًا وَلَا بُرْهَانًا وَلَا نَجَاةً وَيَأْتِي يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا قَارُونَ وَفِرْعَانٌ وَهَامَانٌ وَأُبَيْ بْنِ خَلَفٍ He says, but whosoever does not safeguard these prayers, then he will have no light, no proof, nor salvation on the day of resurrection, and he will be gathered along with Fir'aun and Haman and Qarun and Ubay bin Khalaf. Allah will gather those who do not preserve their prayers. He will gather them with the biggest criminals ever known, who are also mentioned in the Quran, some of them by name. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he explained about this. He says, the person who abandons the prayer, he will be raised with such people because of his neglect towards the salah and his involvement with the dunya. The involvement in terms of the possession and the wealth, in terms of leadership, in terms of administrative work, and in terms of business. Therefore, he says, if he was involved with his money, with his property, he will be resurrected with Qarun. And if he was involved in leadership of a place, of a country, then with the Pharaoh, with Fir'aun, if, if he was involved with administrative work, as a result of that, he was diverted away from Allah Azza wa Jal, he will be alongside Haman. And if he was involved with business and trade, then he will be with Ubay ibn Khalaf, who was one of the traders of the disbelievers of Mecca. So my dear brothers in Islam, we have to look after our salah. We should care about our salah. And we should have the success of the salah. And what is that? Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who enter the prayer, and basically they leave the dunya behind them. They leave all that matters of the dunya behind them. So may Allah make us of those who pray and we leave the dunya behind us. Unfortunately, many Muslims, they do not make their prayer their priority. Whereas our lives should revolve around these prayers and not the other way around. Just this morning, I was discussing with one of the brothers after Salat al-Fajr, after we see people walking their dogs on the street. They're awake at that morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., they're awake, walking their dogs, taking, taking them around so they can relieve themselves, okay? Akramakumullah. For that reason, they wake up and they take these dogs for walk. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know. This is a priority for them. This is a concern for them. And they do it consistently. They wake up in the morning for this. How many Muslims wake up for Fajr in the morning? You know, just think about that. Let alone come into the masjid. But look at what these people are doing, subhanAllah. They're dogs. Yeah, they take out their dogs for these walks because that's important for them. And that's the priority for them. Whereas, have we made the prayer our priority? This is a question that we need to ask ourselves. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to correct us and to grant us good understanding of, the, of this deen. And that he allows us the ability to leave the dunya behind when we enter the salah. Because as soon as we enter the salah, eventually it seems that the dunya is coming to us. We're thinking about all these dunya we matters in our life. And we're, we're not thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah says, do not let these possessions that you have in this world divert you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to protect us and to make us amongst those who observe this great obligation. It's a heavy obligation and we have to make it consistent. We ask Allah to help us to do that and to forgive us for any shortcoming. Allahumma ameen. عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر فبدا في بنفسك قال جل من قال عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وعنم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين هذا والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة